Good, good afternoon. It's the Mike and Mario show here again. Uh, it's uh, Friday, June 18th. How are you doing, Mike? Mario, I am doing great despite the weather. It's raining outside, but yet I'm going to make the best of this weekend. Looking forward to connecting and going over this past week's, you know, little fiasco yeah. we experienced, man. So definitely good to be back. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah I'm fine as well. We, we've got rain here in London, too. But uh, uh, the uh, silver lining is that it's cooled down a bit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Ex interesting week this week, and it has been. Uh, do you want to kick off with the uh, the Perth Mint and uh, what we've heard from, uh, I think it was Robert Keynes and yeah. uh, Dan Daniel uh, Vigario. Uh, he's an accountant. They've, they've gone through uh, the Perth uh, Mint's uh, financial statements with a tooth comb. <laughs> and uh yeah maybe you can uh, show us uh, yep. what uh, they found out about the perth mint yes i can so let me actually put this on the screen here and then i'll switch it over and we will dive right into it and i got a couple clips that i want to play and so let me actually me man okay i gotta get myself together okay here we go nope wrong one <laughs> here we go here we go <laughs> yeah perth, net fractional lending so um this was a great you know, did get a chance to listen to that whole thing there because once I listened to the follow up from Go Silver Pros, I realized I realized what was going on with this one. But uh, I got a couple of clips I want to play if you don't mind. So we want share 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 your two cents on this. You know, whole little conversation real quick as I pull up the other stuff if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so I, this guy here that uh, David Lynn has interviewed. Uh, he started working for the Perth Mint back in 2019. He's an ex uh, Goldman Sachs banker, just to give you an idea. Yeah. Uh, he's worked for the World Gold Council. The World Gold Council might sound like a friendly institution towards gold, but they actually were the ones who sponsored uh, the GLD ETF. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, they, they don't want the uh, small investor uh, to buy physical gold. They want people to stay in the paper game. And uh, from what I heard from this uh, guy, he said that, uh, you know, they, they don't lend out <laughs> any of their physical gold and silver. But uh, if you listen to Gold Silver Pro's uh, video, which they did, I think, uh, three days ago or two days ago. Yeah. I mean, the, that accountant, uh, he's been an accountant for over 14 years, I think, a lot of experience. And he, he went through the financial statement and, and it's the Perth Mint's financial statement. You yeah. know, he didn't use uh, information, <laughs> uh, third party information. Yeah. So. so what I'll do is I'll play this clip here. Just start off. Let me see here because I've made a couple of marks here. Let me get my stuff together. So just I, I think it's just some of the things that stood out to me as I was listening that I think is worth mentioning or having uh, repeated. So I'll play this and then we will chime in on it a little bit the Perth Mint has sold precious metals it's a sale to a counterparty the counterparty who don't know who it is we'll touch on this later owes the Perth Mint for that sale that, that's normal for selling right normally you'd pay in 30 days however in this instance the counterparty only pays the Perth Mint at some undisclosed future date at the market price of the metal at that date that is highly unusual in fact, that is highly risky. And because it's so risky, the Perth Mint has had to take out a derivative contract to protect themselves against that. And we're going to know, we're going to find out why it's important later on. And finally, on top of that, because the Perth Mint allows such long extended settlement terms, well, they've decided to take some finance income on that. Again, really unusual. Okay. And again, we'll touch on that later. So please just if one if one make one point today this is the most important thing that we need to pay attention to okay yeah. if I all right so i'll stop it right there and so what what it was stood out to me is the fact that they are profiting off of some of the products that they've set aside and created and by leasing and all that other all the unknowns of what's going on behind the uh, behind the depositors backs they are profiting i think it was, it was some numbers he threw out there that we can touch on in a minute but the biggest concern, the biggest takeaway I got from this was that literally because of the inclusion of this new gentleman here, we talked about who's a former, you know, deep, I'm going to say deep state, but a former, <laughs> a former big bank operative. He was literally brought in to pull off the high, uh, a heist in this magnitude here that majority of the po people who have, they actually have their medals there have no clue 
that their metals are being used to profit the Perth Mint while putting it at risk. Because if the market continues to have these issues of being able to actually get supply, they won't be able to get that metal back, possibly. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of the people they talk about that have a risk are people who have unallocated positions, mm -hmm. which means that they would have to convert to allocated. Uh, you know, unallocated means that, you know, you have a claim, you don't really own uh, mm -hmm. any silver. And yeah, uh, they went through all the numbers and they showed that they're not short. And uh, there's another uh, interview uh, by the uh, Perth Mint CEO. Mm -hmm. I think it was yesterday with David Lynn from Kitco. And he ca categorically denied that they lend out any gold. Yeah. But uh, Rob Keynes and uh, Daniel Vigario, actually, it was Daniel Vigario, the accountant, mm -hmm. he, he proves that uh, the Perth Mint, uh, the bulk of their income or their revenues is from uh, basically lending money on the back of uh uh, you know, people who actually keep allocated physical gold uh, with the Perth Mint and also maybe on the back of those who have unallocated gold. And this gentleman, uh, Richard Hayes, also categorically denies that uh, they do any derivatives trades. But if you look at uh, the analysis by Daniel Vigario, yeah, uh, if they didn't trade, they wouldn't be able to hedge a lot of their... Uh, uh, you know, positions that they have, mm -hmm. which are, are not, uh, you know, they're, they're like uh, short. So they have to hedge because of market uh, price fluctuation. So it's very interesting. I'd love to see uh, Robert Keynes, uh, Daniel Vigario, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the CEO of Perth Mint, all, all, all three be interviewed together with, uh, uh, with Kitco, but I don't think that would happen. Uh, yeah. I, I do think Kitco needs to bring in uh, uh, Robert Keynes and Daniel Vigario of the uh, Gold Silver Pros. Yeah, I think that would be more than fair because yeah. they're, they're basically saying, "Oh, these people are not really uh, coming to us." I think the the Deutsche ex Deutsche Bank guy said. Well, they haven't contacted us. How can they know anything we do? Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> because you have public uh, financial statements and they use that. Yeah. They use your public financial statements to comb through, you know, all the data. Right. But I like to emphasize, though, that like the uh, guys at Gold Silver Pro said, mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing wrong with the Perth Mint products. You know, they yeah. you can buy still buy gold and silver coins and bars from them. Yeah. yeah. What the problem is, is that you need to be concerned uh, with unallocated positions. Uh, and why do people have unallocated positions? Well, because there's no storage fees, because basically there's nothing behind it. Yeah. It's cheaper. But yeah. uh, what could happen is there's a big crisis and you go to the Perth Mint and you say, I want to convert it to allocated mm -hmm. and then take the metal. It, it could take uh, weeks or months and then it could be too late. Right. Especially it could be too late. Definitely. If this shortage in you know, this well-known shortage, you know, U.S. Mint confirmed silver shortage in particular continues to increase, which it definitely will head into summer because we know that, you know, I think a lot of a, there's a lot of pressure on gold, of course, due to this Basel three and all the banks deciding to try to really, you know, put their uh, hands into the pot of, of, of available and above ground gold. But it's definitely going to create a, a pinch. And so I think what they're trying to do is educate as many people as possible to say, if you are a part of this program here, be cautious and you know probably want to check in because if you think you have something there that's yours you might want to think again because yeah when, when there, if there's a if there's a bullion bank run you might be yeah. left out so get in while yeah. you can <laughs> da daniel vigario he's based out of london actually he's originally south african mm -hmm. and he says though this is more than just the perth mint this mm -hmm. is uh just shows how this whole bullion market and the whole all the markets are so manipulated the fiat currency market how there's so much smoke smoke and mirrors and that everything you know and that's why it's important to have physical gold and silver sound money uh yeah and yeah. uh let, let's hope this uh you know th these shenanigans are brought to the uh to the open yeah let me play I think, uh, yeah i'm gonna play another clip in reference to how he's concerned that the Perth Mint can't meet their obligations. So I'm going to play this little small, short clip here and we'll get ready to move on to another subject in a second. Let me click play here. And further on, to answer this question number one, if they liquidate all of their 
current assets and current liabilities, which I've listed above, which Rob has gone through already, they can liquidate it to a value of 73 billion million. And the net of those two gives you 146 short. So you can see here, to answer question one, the president categorically cannot meet all long to all short term obligations, right, without using the ETF. Now, if you look back in history, you'll see that has never happened before. They have always been positive. In other words, the president has always been able to meet obligations, current obligations, okay, using until, the current Until assets. what year, Daniel? Until, until <laughs> your, your 2019, when the ETF was formed. And now, when it, that's mm -hmm. when, by the way, <laughs> oh my God. the Kiko interview came to the Perth Mint as that exact year. Correct. Oh, okay, so yeah. this is significant. So we, we've not answered question one. The Perth Mint cannot meet its... It's, it's obligation, and the investors, if, if you're an investor, um, uh, sorry, client of the president, excuse me, you're at risk because, well, they're short a billion pounds, so you could be sitting as, you know, for delivery, for physical, you want, you know, conversion from an allocated to allocated, they're short a billion. So John Adams is completely right. The president does have problems at 2020 to, to convert to, to allocated because they're short a billion. And if everything went wrong and the person wanted to liquidate everything, they're still short. Okay, question one answered. All right, they're still short. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that does a good job right there of summarizing some issues that uh, their, their calculations show the Perth men is definitely short. <laughs> Yeah, and the guy he referenced there uh, that joined in 2019 is not the CEO, but yeah. the other guy. He's an yeah. American, uh, yeah, who who worked for Deutsche Bank, and yeah. I think he was involved in creating the GLD ETF as well. So, um, yeah. So here's that guy here for those that might just be tuning in. This guy here, he he happened to come at the right time when Perth Mint got into the whole fractional lending yeah. ETF creations. Coming from Deutsche Bank, having experience in all that issues that Deutsche Bank had, and they of course paid large fines and all that stuff like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, what a coincidence, huh? I guess. That's just yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's keep it moving, man. So for those that are tuning in, uh, hit the thumbs up button, share your support for the channel. Once again, just going over some of the really important information that people need to know in regards to the paper products, the ETFs, all that unallocated stuff that's been created that has been very important in them being able to suppress the price and prolong this, uh, the great heist that has taken place with people thinking they own things that may not necessarily be there. So just stuff to continuously pay attention to. So let's move on a little bit to, uh, I guess, this week's uh, Federal Reserve follow-up. Uh, we have uh, Bullard says the Fed's hawkish shift, a natural response to a stronger inflation slash growth. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that, uh, Mr. Mario? Yeah, he, he came out today, I think, just before the markets open. Mm -hmm. So it had a big impact on the stock market. Let's have a look right now. Uh, the Dow is down 400 points. Uh, gold and silver are still slightly uh, up on the day. But, yeah. uh, but they were a lot higher than uh, where we're now. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Bullard is usually in the last uh, six or maybe even more years, uh, whenever the stock market has been in trouble, he's mm -hmm. the one who's, uh, they wheel out to uh, say something dovish. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting that he said that. I, I don't think it's anything really uh, significant, yeah. significantly different mm -hmm. than what we heard from the FOMC statement. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I saw someone, uh, I think it was Rafi Faber or someone else, say that what the Fed did with his uh, announcement uh, mm -hmm. last, uh, was it Wednesday, I think, the 16th, Yeah, uh, was basically say that it's like two uh, drug addicts who come out <laughs> and say, uh, we might uh, quit in about two years, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, or let's say there's an 18 uh, drug addicts, which is how many people there are on the FOMC. And uh, maybe three or four of them came out and said, uh, we might want to, like, decrease the amount of drugs we take uh, yeah. in a couple of years. So that, that that's basically what it is. Uh, someone here mentioned, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, it says, Mark, uh, Carl, Art, any word of uh, metals? contracts being sold this week, driving down prices, or is this the dollar's last stand before it all crashes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. this is uh, what the, some people say, well, how can the bankers be shorting even more uh, paper gold if they mm -hmm. want to cover their shorts by sh uh, selling more, they're going to increase their shorts. 
but they're quite clever at this because they know the levels where you know the uh, speculators the smaller investors have mm -hmm. their uh where they will get hurt and where they'll have to to sell sell out yeah. so what they will do let's say they're net short fifty thousand contracts they'll come out and they'll, they'll sell <laughs> when it's really illiquid maybe 200 contracts it drives the price lower it triggers mm -hmm. stops and then you get all the specs all the small people coming out and selling thousands of contracts mm -hmm. and then the banks just come back buy back right those up. hundred or a few hundred and then they start it all over again mm -hmm. and, and so they've driven the price of gold from uh, 1900 to around 1770 in a matter of days yeah and uh is it coincidence with the basel three deadline for the european banks on the 20th of june mm -hmm. uh, maybe but mm -hmm. <laughs> who who knows uh right. we'll find out soon right uh, yeah I, I actually as per the dollar I, I think the dollar yeah this is like a, a uh, in the markets we have the expression it's called a dead cat bounce yeah you no know, the markets drop really sharply and then they bounce and you think oh everything's great and then they just go down again uh when the dollar will go back down i don't know but mm -hmm. i have a feeling you know looking at the british pound or sterling yeah uh, if you go back to the 08 crisis to the crisis last year mm -hmm. uh, the pound always gets hit really hard mm -hmm. in in the in these crises and i've noticed that the pound has come off quite a bit in the last few weeks and it, it could be a precursor to a bigger uh you know we could have a a major crash in the markets and yes gold and silver in the miners might get hit but i think it would be very short term yeah. I, I think if we did have a crash um let's say now in june it would be half uh the time that uh, we had the crash in back last year in march yeah. and last year was the the fastest uh you know crash in history and, and the biggest crash so i i think it could get even worse we just have to uh wait and see Get back and but, um, yeah <laughs> yeah here's a here's a comment here from uh Benara says hello mike and mario thank you for both sharing your time everything you are referencing is on is on what they permit you to know and that's very true and they've given us more than enough to be able to analyze and assess the true nature of the system to where it has already spelled run for cover. Like, you know, we all know that the system is literally rigged against us. The whole goal in these type of talks here is to hopefully reach some new people who may not yeah. be aware of this. And also, we that's can, right. You know, we only talk about what we do know on the surface, but based upon the forensic accounting information that was just provided from the gentleman over Gold Silver Pros, we can see that things are starting to rear his head above surface. So that's more than enough information to uh, tell people take cover. <laughs> because yeah and the point the point of the uh you know the the gold and silver manipulation that has been happening you know since the early mid 70s is basically to keep the dollar strong mm -hmm. and even though the price of gold has gone up a lot since then uh you know this system where we have zero rates endless money printing mm -hmm. uh you know uh huge credit derivatives you know fed's balance sheet going to eight trillion for the first time yeah. uh, it can all this is only happening because they've been able to control uh you know the precious metals because yeah. gold and silver are money so if they mm -hmm. hadn't done that maybe 20 15 years ago you know the whole thing would have imploded and we would be in a much better place today maybe yeah. with sound money so yeah some people say oh if they really uh manipulated the markets you know how come the, the prices go up well what i would say is that uh if they hadn't done it we probably wouldn't even have the fiat currencies we have now mm -hmm. and uh you know there wouldn't be a price for for gold in in dollars or pounds paper dollars or paper pounds yeah yeah and even in and i want to show this this uh graph here over the la of the last seven days of the market and once again you mentioned the basel the basel situation earlier you know it, it to me it's not by coincidence that over the last seven days this is a seven day uh graph here that everything's been or gold and silver in particular have been trending downwards 
given the fact that we are what two weeks away or a week away, yeah. a week and a half away from the whole Basel yeah. Basel three. So I would imagine that the goal will be, of course, to put as much pressure on the price as you can now for all the paper stuff that you're going to have to maneuver with. You, you know, to, time frame. so they can cover at a lower price. Exactly, so they don't lo lose as many billions, and then they can also buy the physical as well because mm -hmm. you can bet mm -hmm. the bankers are going to buy physical uh, gold as well. Yep. So we got literally, let me see, one, we got seven, uh, about uh, nine days, give or take. So I wouldn't be surprised if next week we also have uh, some surprises or something like that that tries to, you know, get at least get it, get the, get it down another dollar or two on silver would be a goal for them, I'm sure. And to get it down another hundred or so on gold would probably be a, a, a a criminal banker's dream <laughs> so that they could uh, try to cover some issues on their end. So um, it's strategically planned at the right time. And here's the biggest thing for everybody out in the community is that, you know, the spot price might go lower, but the premiums will go up. So more than likely, wh whatever you try to do, if let's just like you got a buddy, buddy who's, you know, good friends with you, he's going to not really increase it a dollar or two or so you're still going to end up paying more for your ounce of whatever it is you go to get because you know the the, the coin shops and the dealers they have to make sure that they keep their doors open too and they're going to make up the difference or whatever the whatever the manipulation price end up going to so i doubt they really care man but anyway we'll keep it moving so for those tuning in feel free let's open up a little bit and get some thoughts or questions so feel free to highlight anything in the chat and we'll definitely try to touch on it share our two cents on it so feel free to uh chime in and we'll keep it moving and so I, I'm curious, Mario. So we are oh, what two weeks now? A week, a week, a week away from the whole El Salvador legal tender side of things, and I'm seeing I haven't seen any pushback from the U.S. It hasn't been mentioned, in, you know, the Treasury or anything like that. I haven't mentioned the fact that they're concerned with, you know, there being a little bit competition, you know, as far as the legal tender status of the El Salvador uh, situation. There, IMF now is is dialing back a little bit so what, what are your thoughts on that like was the whole idea of announcing this legal tender a part of the plan and right on time you think because there hasn't been much you know hoopla from the developed nations yet i uh, i don't know if it's got anything to do with the imf or uh, i just think it was a move by the uh president of el salvador mm -hmm. uh yeah i, I mean he, so? looks like a, a, he looks like a he looks like a fairly thing. yeah he looks like a fairly young guy Mm -hmm. You know, so who knows? But yeah. uh, what I said at the time when they came out with the announcement is that uh, the best thing he could have done is just uh, abolish mm -hmm. all legal tender laws and yeah. let uh, the people of El Salvador decide what they want to use for money. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so we'll see. So somebody said the World Bank is upset. And I remember seeing, uh, let me see, an article yesterday that kind of hinted at that. I'll grab that. And then also, I forgot to mention one thing where we were talking um, about the projected uh, two rate height, uh, uh, interest rate hikes between now and 2023, as if like they're going to actually be able to pull that off. And it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting how they use the narrative of of increasing interest rates as a as a as they're, they're like, was it the Fed forward speak or whatever they call it? To try to you know sell confidence into the markets type of thing, but yet I don't quite see this myself. What what do you what do you think they're going to actually be able to pull something off, or will they? Yeah, I, I think they're in a tough situation right now because uh -huh. they're trying to uh, they're trying to rein in the commodities markets like yeah. lumber and copper, uh, but they don't understand, or maybe they do, but uh, uh -huh. they think most people don't understand that the reason why uh, commodities are going up. Uh, it's not because there's inflation. <laughs> it's not the commodities that cause the inflation. Uh -huh. The people who have caused the inflation are at the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. It's Uncle Sam. By you know creating trillions, the Fed's balance sheet is more than doubled in the last 16 months by yeah. more than four trillion. We are eight trillion. That's what causes the inflation. You know, M1 and M2 going through the roof. Yeah. That's what causes commodity prices to go up. So unless the Federal Reserve uh, hikes rates, you know, if they really want to be hawkish, they should have ra raised rates uh, mm -hmm. a few days after the CPI came out last week. Yeah, they should have done an emergency meeting because you can bet if it was the other way around, if uh, CPI came out at minus one percent, and and uh, you know the stock market was crashing. They would have come out before the meeting and said, uh, "We've decided to, in an emergency meeting, to cut the Fed funds rate by one percent. We mm -hmm. decided to add 
150 billion in QE a, a day or a month. Uh, and so, you know, with the CPI at 5%, uh, you know, if they were really all hawkish, they would have come out and said, oh, we didn't expect this. We're going to raise rates now, you know, mm -hmm. big shock. Then yeah. I would, you know, I would expect these big moves. But the thing is, the markets now are ruled by algorithms and uh, mm -hmm. by the people who wrote the algorithms. They, they're they all like mathematicians. You know, they, they go to the uh, Keynesian universities and uh, they, they don't think, you know, in my yeah. opinion. They've yeah. been taught in a way uh, to look at the dollar as something that's good. Uh, I, I saw yesterday a comment by... Uh, uh, economist from Johns Hopkins. Mm -hmm. You might have heard of him, Steve Steve Hankey, or, yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he made a comment about Argentina. He said, "You know, Argentina, they need to forget the peso. You know, they're borrowing too much money. The government, uh -huh. they got too much inflation." And he said, "They need to dollarize." He, he's you know? every nation. Every nation to him needs to dollarize. And I'm thinking, like, well, what's and the long term? And, and I, I replied to that tweet and said. Why not go go back to sound money? And I showed him that chart of the dollar yeah. that's been losing, you know, ninety eight percent of its value since the Fed was created. Yeah. I said to him, "Why dollarize? <laughs> you know, you could have replaced uh, Fernandez and the peso and Argentina for you know all the presidents since Nixon. You know, the dollar. You know, uh -huh. and so <laughs> yeah and that's that's why how the algorithms my point was the algorithms that run the markets they all think like uh, this guy hanky i think his name is hanky i'm not sure but yeah i mean i'm trying, I'm trying to find his twitter account but yeah so I, I follow his uh inflation charts and he does great work you know as as he said these are real true inflation measurements and of course it's the, the nations that are really struggling that those numbers are extremely high but his solution for everybody is to dollarize. You know, you can afford yeah. all this if you I give mean, me your currency and just adapt the dollar. I'm thinking like, so is this guy, you know, so he's a very smart guy. So clearly he has to know that the dollar is on its last leg in regards to the way the world sees look, it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just course, that they, these guys hate gold, don't they? They hate. Yeah. They're Keynesians. That's yeah. what it is. So he does you a know. good job talking about the Iranian black market. And of course, you know, inflation yeah. is through the roof everywhere. Yeah, but he, he, well, he's like. Uh, gaslighting other people so we don't look at the American problems, it seems. Yeah. Iran, you know, Argentina. What about the U.S.? <laughs> now, here's a question. For his calculations that he put together, for his, you know, inflation metrics, is, are, they the, are they the same metrics that he's using for the revelation of these other countries that are having extreme inflation? Is that the same measurement he would use if he if he cared about charting the U.S.? And then how well, far away from that is John Williams from Shadow Stacks? Yeah, you know, original inflation measurements. I, I, yeah, I, I think you know countries like Iran and Argentina, uh -huh. uh, they they haven't been as efficient as uh, you know the the Bureau of Labor Statistics and uh -huh. the U.S. government in streamlining these streamlining these statistics, i.e., tamping down. You know, they they maybe they haven't learned about uh, using hedonics and substitution uh -huh. in, in the CPI. Yeah, so I, I would say I <laughs> Iran and Argentina probably still use the uh, old uh, shadow stats. You know, mm -hmm. the the way they measure CPI like the U.S. used to do maybe 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and I would find it hard to believe. I would assume that all the central banks have to be, you know, working the same type of metrics or perhaps not because no one's really paying attention to it. And you'll never hear any of those countries that are experiencing high inflation being mentioned in mainstream news here. Like never once have they mentioned yeah. the issues in Lebanon, Nigeria, you know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. never talked here. Most the, people don't think yeah. on their own their own city for the most part. So you wouldn't go looking for information on how people are struggling. The Here's other the problem with just one more thing. Uh, the other yeah. problem with countries like Argentina mm -hmm. and Iran is that uh, they don't have the reserve currency. So uh, they don't get the demand for their currencies Correct. that keeps inflation down. The U S still do has that. Yeah, which is the brain, main reason they're able to give it away with what they're doing. So here's a comment here uh, from Robert. It says, gold may hit 1,500 before it's permanent liftoff. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised. And that's the thing when it comes to numbers, nothing would surprise me given the fact that I know the system's rigged and it, they have to come up with all types of creative ways to get the yeah. price down for their own benefit. So it wouldn't surprise I, I, me. 
I still think uh, you would have to pay like uh, eighteen hundred for gold. You mm -hmm. know, if you want to buy a real gold coin or bar, mm -hmm. if it hit fifteen hundred, you probably might not even find any gold right. if the the spot price goes to fifteen hundred. Because right. it wouldn't mean anything. You know, I don't think uh, mm -hmm. there would be any gold. Or, you know, if silver went back to fifteen, I mean, <laughs> you'd have to probably pay two hundred percent premium on it. Right. And that's the thing, like the paper markets, paper spot price has already been disconnected. It, it first disconnected officially back when that whole Wall Street's bet, Wall Street silver officially took off. And we started being exposed to the fact that there's not enough, you know, supply to meet demand. And so premiums definitely started jumping at that time. Yeah. La last year as well, in March, when the uh -huh. lockdown started, there's yeah. a huge uh, spread between the uh, spot market and the f in London and the futures market on COMEX. Yeah. It was like $80, $100. Uh, mm -hmm. The market, the paper market almost uh, imploded back in March. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, yeah, someone had to step in and provide the, the physical gold. Yeah. I, I think, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Andrew McGuire seems to think it was the BIS who helped out the bullion mm -hmm. banks. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Now, let's turn a little bit towards, I guess, you know, the mm -hmm. primary cover up for all of this we're experiencing in the monetary and financial realm. It has to do with the, as I say, co I'm going to say cove certificate. <laughs> and so <laughs> they're trying to further the whole agenda of needing permission through a digital app to begin tra uh, traveling. And so in the EU yesterday, they announced that starting, um, I guess, Monday or J July 1st, that yeah. you'll be able to download your, you know, they try to sell, you'll be able to download your your pass. And certificate, certificate, they call it. Yeah. yeah. And so, and of course, that's through the EU. But yet also, I know in the UK, you guys are also experiencing a little bit of a, a extension on some things. Share with us what you're seeing on the ground as far as how, you know, Boris seems to be quite yeah, uh, it's it's almost like they're trying to push people to he he used the term double jabbed mm -hmm. <laughs> which sounds like uh you know you're uh, vaccinating a cow or some yeah you know it sounds really horrible and uh we're supposed to be back to normal this coming monday but uh, -huh. uh they've delayed it for another four weeks you know what had that has done it's probably going to put a lot of small uh, hospitality, pubs, restaurants, uh, travel companies out of business. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's probably going to be help the big corporations that are involved in those sectors because, you know, they've got access to the uh, central bank spigot, easy credit, and, and they'll, they'll buy out uh, all these failed companies. Mm -hmm. Their market shares will increase. But yeah, they're really pushing it here uh, for, you know, I think the reason they've extended it uh, you know, the the controls or the regulations uh, on this uh, beer uh, disease, Cerveza, yeah. <laughs> is because they they want to force more and more people to take the, uh, you know, that thing. Yeah. And, and because I think a lot of people are not taking it, even though we're told that, you know, millions and millions of people have taken it. Yeah. I think they, they that's a bit of a propaganda to make... Right make those people who haven't taken it feel like they're they're like a really small part of the population maybe you know to convince them to do it right um yeah yeah so here on the home front here in michigan just yesterday whitmer announced that upcoming this upcoming monday all restrictions are removed you know we're free to go and they're painting that narrative that everything is fine and even they in new york they had fireworks I think it was earlier this week where they just saying that they threw out a percentage saying that seventy percent have participated here in Michigan, sixty percent have participated, but yet they're still continuing to reach out to people. Even in Michigan here, they said that for those that are a little bit older and not able to, you know, come to us, we're going to go to them in, a, in being a good Samaritan. We're going to knock on doors and make sure everybody's you know good to go. And I'm thinking like, huh? I'm like if everything is so good. You know why the need to continue to push 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 the narrative that you know we're not done yet the fight still goes on and then also july 4th is supposed to be biden's you know time frame for 70 percent for the country and of course once again can you believe those numbers and stats being given my first thought is no you cannot because they're hiding all the adverse reactions and all the oh yeah the things that they don't want people to know 
<laughs> but they're promoting all the yeah. things. It looks good. All the commercials yeah. is like, you know, why did you decide to do it? And the first thing people say on the little infomercials is, I wanted to get back to normal. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay. But yeah, okay. So we'll see what that I goes. to go back. I wanted to watch the Tigers game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, Tigers, just, they suck anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Have my, fun, my, man. Uh, my, I have a cousin who uh, works for the Tigers. So, she might not oh, really hear it. <laughs> uh oh, so I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that, but yeah, I've gone. To, no, it's all right. I'm not a baseball fan, so you know, Tigers is not too far away, but it's like the Michigan <laughs> sports in general are yeah. all heading that way, uh, so yeah. it's not really enjoyable. So I think uh, it goes in cycles, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's been a long drought for Michigan, <laughs> 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 a long drought. Oh man, but anyway, for, for those tuning in, uh, feel free to throw out some questions and some, and some comments or whatnot, we'll touch on it. Mm. And uh, just having fun is Friday, man. Uh, but yeah. I think every every situation is different around the country because you know Florida seems to be the the Florida and Texas in particular seem to be the 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 focal points for freedom now and the great pushback. And so everybody's migrating do- down south in a sense, man. I wonder how long will that last because it's going to drive up housing prices. It's going to put create a lot of you know uh, problems for the economy down in Florida, good and bad. But what about the states that are they're vacating, like California and New York? You know, what what, what will they do with those? Uh, well, they'll, 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 they might be pressured into changing the way they act. You know, if they want to <laughs> attract people back. Yeah, that would be. I would hope that to be the case. But for some reason, when this whole agenda is your own nothing, you'll be happy with it. I'd imagine they want everybody to sell out because you got all mm-hmm. those money managers, pension funds, all those pools of capital sitting around coming up waiting to buy stuff. So I'd imagine they're literally trying well, to take the pinch. Maybe after they buy everything, then they'll put it back to normal and then Yeah, but it's going to become rent from us. And so one of the articles yeah. I shared on Twitter is that there's people now trying to sell the narrative of, you know, maybe renting is better than ownership. <laughs> and I'm like, how, like how, at what point did the American dream, in particular concept, be shifted to where now it's better to rent as a part of the dream as opposed to owning your own home or whatnot for whatever that's worth. So they're changing the narrative in every area of our lives, Mario. It's, it's, you know, you know the uh, president of the European Commission, she's a German, mm-hmm. she announced his uh, certificate yesterday mm-hmm. for the, the beard disease. Mm-hmm. Her name is Ursula von der Leyen. Yeah. Uh, and I looked her up on Wikipedia, her, uh, on her dad's side, She's related to uh, slave owners uh, back uh, in the day in South Carolina. And yeah. even further back, her family, uh, they were one of the biggest uh, slave traders in, in England. <laughs> you know, really? so it, it, it shows how, you know, I'm not saying, you know, you have to blame her for everything, but it's in her genes to try to uh, control people. Yeah. You know, this is these are the kind of people that are still in charge. And when you look at her, you think, oh, she's a nice German lady. You know, mm-hmm. Ursula van der Leyen, you know, she sounds really friendly. You know, she she showed her certificate on her phone. Uh-huh. She smart. She smiled, you know, and it's like people don't dig deep enough, you know, yeah. under the surface to see where do these people come from? Mm hmm. Very true. Very true. And so speaking of which, uh, somebody, I just saw a comment here uh, about uh, the, the agenda in Alberta. It says, hey, we're thinking about they have a lottery for one million up here in Alberta for all those who agree to get the, you know, to participate. And yeah, so yeah. The fact that they are given incentives like, you know, of course, I saw haircuts for jabs, joints for jabs. <laughs> joints. Free, for, no, literally like Washington, the state of Washington is like joints. I'm like, huh? OK, so every state, every city has their own selling point. And I think like if they if people don't critically think and realize that if they have to sell it to you that bad. Heroin that much, for jabs? Huh? Huh? Heroin, heroin for Japs? As Probably well? in Oregon. I didn't see, but Oregon, yeah. I know they legalized yeah. all. No, you're, trying right. to, you're trying to keep people healthy and give them drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Uh, oh, man. Uh, it, it's it's crazy, man. So, but it is what it is, man. So, it, so we were talking off air about how the, the news is so negative and so full of fear. Even when we come together, for example, we don't try to promote fear. We try to make people be aware but then also it's that time to unplug, enjoy your weekends. And as I was mentioning off air about the whole talking about prepping and how a lot of that has to do with our mindset. And whether we, what would you say? What, 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 what,
Uh, Robert 292, lap dances for jabs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, er, oh, no, no, no. In Las Vegas, I, I saw that. I shared that. Like, literally, that's real. I shared that. And, My goodness. And also, listen to this. This is off, off topic. But I shared an article where it said there's a shortage of dancers in Vegas, I think. And so they're giving signing bonuses <laughs> for, for a dancer, for female dancers to come back to work. And I'm thinking like, wow, like, so all these mm -hmm. events, man, are, are strategically planned, yeah. but, uh, about, you know, focusing on a little bit of good news here and there, like creating your own good news, the, the mindset, like if they're structurally trying to plan a reset, how can we take, be proactive in creating our own, and I want to say even a, a reset, but a restructuring of our own lives and our priorities is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know what I'm saying a lot of that has to do with the financial realm, the spiritual realm, the natural realm. You know, what anything else come to mind that it would be a good area of our lives yeah. to probably put a little yeah. time into? Yeah, actually, I interviewed uh, a Bjorn Andreas Boo Hansen. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a YouTube channel, like 400,000 subscribers, and he's from Norway. He yeah. focuses on his Viking heritage. But uh -huh. he loves the outdoors, mm -hmm. and uh, he thinks that uh, spending as much time as you can outdoors in nature is good for your mind. Yeah, he he realizes that not everyone can live in the woods or you know in, in rural areas. But to try to do the most you can to to uh, spend time outdoors, uh, yeah. I think that's a, a good thing. You yeah. know, uh, we spend a lot of time in front of our computers watching things and everything. Uh, I, I try to play golf. You know that's quite nice outdoors, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe I should try to uh, do more. And yeah. I think uh, more people should try to do that as well. Yeah, I would agree. And that's a, that that is key outdoors. So like literally, like you know, every summer we like to take some family trips or whatever. But yet, the typical way we do it is not necessarily available to us now. So like literally, the first idea was let's get outdoors, let's see nature. Because there's a lot of places here in America where I've never been to just because I never had interest really in tour my own country. But now I'm like, given the fact that, you know, it's not as easy to get up and leave. Yeah, I might want to venture out into the woods. And we got a lot of beautiful scenery here in Michigan, especially. So, yeah, it's time to, you know, you know, just, I guess, find that hidden gems in my own neck of the woods. <laughs> That's right. Mm. Oh, man. But uh, let's get ready to dial back, man. Mario, it's always great to connect with you. Um, what's what's coming up? Uh, outside, of course, Basel 3 in about nine or so days. What's coming up that might be worth keeping an eye on that we can touch on next week and have the viewers really start paying attention to more so if anything comes to mind on your side? Yeah, I mean, uh, I made a video today about the elections in Peru. Yeah. Uh, and uh, why would it that be important? <laughs> Billy didn't get an invite to the G7. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. I, I think he advised uh, 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 the G7 in, in the back channels. Yeah. But, yeah. So, yeah, e elections in Peru. Uh, mm -hmm. Apparently, uh, it's almost certain that this unknown guy who mm -hmm. supposedly uh, has a Marxist communist background might yeah. get into power. Uh, we're still waiting for the results. If he wins, he'd, he'd only take uh, over on July 28th. Mm -hmm. But it... It could affect the silver market because uh, Peru is, uh, I think, the second or third biggest uh, silver producer in the world. Yeah. So we need to keep an eye on that. I haven't seen anyone except me talk about that. I spoke about that this morning. Yeah. Uh, and thank, thanks to one of my viewers. But apart from that, I mean, just we, I think we need to keep an eye on the stock market and mm -hmm. uh, because the Fed might uh, have, uh, un you know, not trying to, but they, they might have just uh, started the next uh, crash in the yeah. markets. And, and also the reverse repo, you know, uh, it, it looks like uh, all this cash, about a trillion, we now have 750 billion in reverse repo. And yeah. the repo, reverse repo and repos are the, uh, like the plumbing of Wall Street. So what it looks like now is that the plumbing there's so much money in, mm -hmm. in the system that it's clog clogging up, and this has never happened before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, keep an eye on the markets. Uh, things could get really volatile, uh, yeah. and they're already getting volatile. Yeah, and that's one thing we we I was on the radar to talk about the whole repo situation because those numbers are getting are growing every day, it seems yeah. like. So yeah. that's definitely yeah. needing something worthwhile. And with, with, with just that,
the Basel three and all the other things mentioned there. That's something in that nature there is, is can be used as the breaking point. And then of course we didn't touch on even the Australian, you know, going offline yesterday and how that cyber oh, situation yeah. is still underway. And so yeah, one, of my, of, w- yeah. one of my, sorry, one of my uh, viewers today this morning from Australia said, yeah, there's a cyber attack. They couldn't, uh, they went to, uh, buy some silver and uh you know their bank bank, yeah couldn't do anything yeah the apps are down so i was talking about last night imagine logging on of course and it's a glitch or it's buffering it's not loading up as fast you know because all those servers and all that stuff is connected and i think there's a single point of failure and it happens to be with those companies that are hosting on behalf of all the banking entities even in-house or outside I imagine all those corporations are probably, you know, they're probably partners with the World Economic Forum. So, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> they, they, they know what's the, the timing of everything. So, and then another thing I want to mention on, which, you know, definitely may not get covered much, but I think it's going to be important. And it's what's happening in Israel right now with their no, new government, Netanyahu's out. And there appears to be a lot of uncertainty as to the direction of their, you know, con- congressional leadership there outside of the president who, you know, we'll see our prime minister or whatever, whoever he is. So it's going to, you know, how will the U.S. respond? Because they've been very favorable to the uh, Israel the last couple of decades. And so I think a lot of biblical things are lining up right now, especially with this move here. So that's something that we will definitely hear more about in the future. So um, but Mario, once again, man, it's great connecting with you. For those that are tuning yeah. in, if you're new here, definitely Manico 64 on YouTube is where this gentleman is at. does great work every single day. Go ahead and show him that cut a coffee mug you got. Medical. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So once again, everybody, it's been great hanging out. If you've enjoyed this, hit the thumbs up yeah. button, share this video, and definitely uh, stay plugged in and stay attentive and try to be proactive as best you can in accordance to the wisdom that you have on navigating these waters. But other than that, be blessed, be safe. I'll see you guys later. Peace.